There you go. Got you where we want you. <laughs> Hi, Jesse here from Tonkadale, and we're going to be demonstrating how to make a spruce top pot. So when we make spruce tops at Tonkadale, the media that we use in our containers is called rice hulls. Rice hulls are just that, the hull of rice. We like to use rice hulls because they hold a lot of moisture, they're nice and compact, and they hold your spruce tops nice and tight. Now rice hulls are infertile, so you won't be able to plant your annual plants in these in the spring, so you'll just simply dump out your containers into your garden. They're a great soil amendment. The reason we need our rice hulls to hold a lot of water is because we're going to be watering our spruce top pots until they freeze solid. That keeps them really fresh because they'll continue to take up water as long as they're not frozen. So everything that gets inserted into the rice hulls gets a fresh cut. We like to cut at an angle just to increase the surface area. Just like a bouquet of fresh flowers, when you take them home, give them a fresh cut, get them into water, and they start taking up water and stay nice and fresh. So fill your container up to the tippity top with rice hulls, give it a nice pat, pat, pat. We don't wanna pound them down too hard because then it's kind of like inserting your spruce tops into cement. We're gonna trim off the end of anything that was once living and is now not. Uh, so they will continue to take up water until we freeze solid. Let's take just a minute to talk about the tools you're going to need when building your spruce top pot. I like to have my own toolbox at home, a toolbox that is separate from the person that I live with so that I always know where my tools are at all times. I need to be in control of my tools. First of all, we have a hand pruner. The hand pruner is for trimming stems about a half an inch in diameter or smaller. So that's real easy to get through something like that with the hand pruner. We have a lopper. The lopper is good for stems that are a little bit larger than that. This one I could probably do with a hand pruner, but you can see it's a little bit easier with a lopper. So that's another good one to have. And these tools can be used in the garden as well. Next we have a wire cutter. So wire cutters are good for um, cutting down any of the permanent stems that we may be using. And then there's a the bolt cutter. So the bolt cutter is for thicker stems, stems that we can't get through with the wire cutter. So same thing as the lapper, we can use the table or bench to get some torque. I think that's the right thing, right? Torque, yeah, like that. I also have a mallet. A mallet is useful if you need to get uh, birch poles into your pots. And it sounds like a cool instrument. Then we also have wilt stop. Wilt stop's really important to keep your spruce tops fresh all through the season. I like to start with a handsome fellow right in the middle. And then we arrange our spruce tops north, south, east, and west. Give your pot a quarter turn and go north, south, east, west again. Make sure to keep your scraps as you're trimming down your tops. You can insert them at the very end. We call them butts and toenails. This is jargon we use at Tonkadale, so don't use it at your dinner party. Next, it's great if you can skirt the bottom with Norway pine. Norway pine holds up really well in the winter conditions. I like to go all the way around and make a nice fluffy tutu. And now it's time for wilt stop. We spray wilt stop on all of our treetop pots. It's a natural pine resin that coats the needles and keeps the moisture in. This keeps your spruce top pots looking good all through the winter. Here we go. Now it's time to decorate. I've selected some of my favorite items and I'm gonna show you how to do it. We have three foot birch poles. We've chosen cardinal dogwood, sugar pine cones, conveniently on a stick, red berries, I call them cherry berries, uh, fresh magnolia, variegated arborvitae, and our most very favorite, oregonia. So everything that was once living and is now not needs to have a fresh cut before you insert it into your rice hull. So I've pre-cut everything here and we're ready to go. So my pot is gonna be seen only from the front. So we did the Norway pine skirting all the way around the base just to make it nice and fluffy. And then we're just going to concentrate our decorating uh, in the front of the pot. Here we go. Birch poles require a mallet to get them in. Three is a good number. You can do three at kind of varying heights or you might do like a high and a low. Uh, next we'll do the cardinal dogwood. These we've already cut to the height that we desire. I have 10 twigs here. I really like a lot of 
red coming up the center. So I'm just going to put in five at a time. You can insert them one by one, but why would you do that if you could simplify? That looks good. Next we'll do the mixed greens, kind of like your side salad. And see how they have a natural arc? You want to make sure the natural arc is flowing out and over versus up and in. There's a difference. And then for something that's kind of really flat, you want to put it in sideways. So remember, these have all received a fresh cut. They're going to continue to take water up out of the rice hulls until they freeze solid. Next is the magnolia. We've cut our bundle up into parts so you can make lots of insertions. And this stuff just kind of dries down, but it still holds its color throughout the winter. Next, we'll do our sugar cones. Two or three is always a good way to go. I think we're gonna do three right in a row. And then berries, outdoor berries. I'm gonna alternate those with my cones. This adds some really pretty color. There you go. Got you where we want you. <laughs> Isn't that happy? So the last thing I said we were going to put in is the Oregonia variegated boxwood. This really just brightens everything up. So I'm just going to put it right where my berries are. So there's a finished decorated spruce top. So this is a 12 inch container. And these are meant to be dropped inside of a more decorative container, something you may already have at home. I'm choosing to use this bucket. When you're all done, just drop it in.